Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Elemental or Element 4L I guess if you want to be shallow and pedantic but in any case this is a brand spanking new actually I'm playing the early access build of uh, what is an atmospheric minimalistic platforming game it's got elements of Night Sky, kind of. You know that game from uh, Niflas where you uh, roll the ball through the levels and it's physics based? It's kind of like that. It's a little bit difficult to explain, uh, but hopefully you'll understand what's going on as we get started here. This is going to be available on Steam. I believe it is going for 10 bucks and it should be available as of this Friday, I think. Uh, we are actually getting some kind of cutscene here, probably indicating that I have beaten the first section of the game, which actually scares the shit out of me uh, because this game kind of has a longer learning curve than you might expect. Let me actually go back to the main menu here. Uh, and maybe I'll start a new game, which will actually not delete my existing save, which is awesome. So we're going to start on, uh, you know, section one, level one, and then get started here. Because I'm worried about getting a little bit later on in the game and kind of not understanding what's going on. Because this game does, it's like learning to ride a bike, you know, it's difficult at first, but then you kind of get a feel for it. Uh, there, there's an unusual sort of pseudo-narrative going on here involving uh, Pac-Man Ghost and some kind of electrical gamete of some sort, fusing to create an elemental monster, but uh, I, I under don't totally understand exactly uh, what is going on with that. I don't necessarily like this game from a story standpoint, uh, I like it more from a kind of gameplay standpoint. This is not a game that I think is going to be for everyone, uh, but it's certainly a game that is uh, very unique, shall we say. So, uh, how do you play elemental? This is a, a, a puzzle that kind of stymied me for a little bit when you first get started, because you look at it and you're like, oh, it's a side-scrolling platformer. So you're like, what do I do? Oh, I probably go to the right. Well, when you go to the right, you turn into a ball of fire and you die. You're like, okay, that's really weird. Maybe I want to go to the left. Well, then I just turn into a square and I just kind of stand there looking extraordinarily cute, let's be honest. So you're like, okay, maybe I just jump with up and that turns us into a ball of air and causes us to jump. Uh, but then when we hit the ground, we die. So uh, this is very much not your traditional platformer. The way that it works is that we actually don't control our movement directly on like a you know horizontal plane. What we do is we actually shift ourselves between elements. So we have up is the element of air, uh, right is the element of fire, left is ice, and down is rock. And by switching between these, uh, what we want to do is create some momentum uh, so that we can move onward. So this is a simply four button game, uh, which is really kind of unique for a platformer. I think it's the kind of thing that some people are going to like and some people are absolutely going to hate. By the way, as you see me going through these obstacles, don't think for a second uh, that I found this easy my first time through. I was stuck at this for like half an hour my first time. I, in fact, we might actually be able to ooh, beat the level fairly quickly here uh, as they teach us the basic mechanics. So, you know, all the elements Oh, I botched that miserably. All the elements have kind of their own unique strengths and weaknesses. Like, for example, you might be noticing that uh, our ice block is, like, really strong Oh, from a uh, momentum standpoint. Like, it allows us to generate a lot of momentum. Similarly, uh, fire, or I guess conversely, fire allows us to gain uh, a lot of speed moving forwards. Air allows us to, like, counteract the effects of gravity to a certain extent and rise much higher, like, inside of these, uh, you know, vents or uplifting areas for whatever reason. Uh, but it's also incredibly vulnerable, like if air touches the ceiling it'll die, or if air touches the um, uh, the ground it'll die. So you have to be uh, extremely cautious about using air because it's vulnerable, uh, but at the same time you also have to use air pretty prodigiously if you want to be able to move forward. It's a game that definitely, you know, it has a learning curve associated with it uh, that is probably going to be a, a difficult ask, I think, for a lot of people. I, I know when I played it for the first time, but well, this level is way longer than I remembered. Uh, but when I played it for the first time, it took me a long time uh, to be able to uh, beat even this first level here. So we're just going to smash through this as rock. And we have completed our first level and found our soul part. So again, this is a game unlike any I've ever played before. Uh, from a mechanic standpoint, it's very difficult to explain what makes it engaging, except for the fact that as you learn what you're doing, it becomes substantially more fun. There is a race mode as well. It's kind of like, you know, it's like learning to walk to a certain extent. At first, it's, uh, you know, intimidating and confusing, but eventually, you just sort of understand it intuitively. And that's not to say that it becomes easier, uh, because they are constantly adding uh, new stuff, uh, but um, or uh, new mechanics, I should say, or mechanics that are at least different from the ones that you've experienced before. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it just becomes kind of second nature after a while, which is really interesting and uh, 
kind of a much better way of kind of tutorializing your game or adding difficulty to a game, I suppose, is the more accurate way to put it. Uh, as opposed to just giving you like an RPG mechanic, oh, where you just actually become stronger when you're playing or something like that. Or, you know, a Metroidvania mechanic where you just become, uh, well, that's gonna kill me. Uh, you just get like new abilities that allow you to progress. Instead, uh, it, it's kind of like um, Dark Souls in a sense. This is a, uh, I'm stretching for this comparison, but it, it's got a similar kind of ethos to Dark Souls maybe. Uh, in that, uh, you know, when you need to progress in the game, most of the time it just boils down to doing a little bit better than you used to be doing, which requires, uh, you know, having a little bit more skill, I suppose. Oh, I have botched this one miserably, but we still might be able to do it if we go kind of close. Not really. We're gonna die in the lava there. Uh, yeah, so uh, the other easier and probably more apt comparison is that it's a little Super Meat boy -y. I mean, in Super Meat Boy, you never really gain, uh, new powers, with the exception of, obviously, unlocking new characters. Uh, but, uh, at the same time, you know, to, to get further in the game just requires you to get a little bit more it's skillful, uh, and, and practice a little bit, I guess is another good way to put it as well. So there's a number of little quirks here that are important to know if you want to, uh, be able to beat or even, you know, understand Monumental. One is the fact, or Elemental, sorry. Uh, one is the fact that there are these, uh, there is this energy mechanic, which is what you can see by that kind of splicey kind of interface that we've got going on here. Uh, so every time I switch to one of the three elements that are not ice, it takes energy. Uh, so if I switch to air, that takes a little bit of our energy, as you can see. If I switch to fire, it takes a little bit of our energy. When our energy is in the red, we can't switch anymore. Uh, but the quirk here is that switching to ice doesn't take any energy at all. Oh, come on. So switching to ice is something that we can always do, uh, which is really important because switching to ice uh, means, you know, it, it's one of the few elements that we can use that doesn't actually cause us to die when we're using it. Uh, which is surprisingly important. Now, please don't touch the sides. There we go. Uh, beyond that, there, there's a couple of tactics that you learn as you play. Uh, that ah, oh, the air must have touched the side there when I switched. Uh, there's a couple of uh, mechanics or tactics that you learn as you play uh, that make it substantially easier. I'm gonna die here as soon as I. Oh no, I didn't. That's kind of surprising. And then I died because the fire exploded. Uh, one one tactic that is really useful is switching from fire to ice kind of rapidly. And what this will do, uh, what this will do is actually allow you to um, very quickly generate some speed, which is incredibly important for solving a lot of these puzzles. There we go, we finally managed to get through there. Uh, on these lava walls, we have to actually switch to uh, fire, uh, because if we don't, we won't be able to bounce, we'll just die. So we're just going to try to gain some momentum by switching... Uh, ooh, that's not even going to be close. Actually, I, sometimes a major complaint, well, kind of a minor complaint actually, but a complaint I have is that if you mess up like your first time, like we have a lot of momentum here, but if I was to mess up my first time going through there, uh, I might not be able to generate enough momentum again to kind of get a good crack at that puzzle, if that makes sense. And another problem is that I've just completely fucked myself there, but uh, uh, so let's let's try this again. But uh, another tactic that I haven't really mentioned is switching like from rock to ice repeatedly, especially when you're falling. This allows you uh, to have a, a really good shot at generating a bunch of momentum. Uh, to move forwards, uh, or, yeah, it's a kind of slide, basically, because the be main benefit of ice is that it slides. I apologize if I'm losing my words occasionally as I play this, but it is kind of a difficult game to explain. Still only got the bronze flag, if I had to guess. Yep. There is a race mode in this game as well, but I am not nearly, uh, kind of at the level I think I need to be at in order to make that work. Uh, so let's try out this level again. We can float over these, um, oh, uh, we can float over lava as long as we're not moving, like, super fast or generating a ton of gravity as we do so, and we can constantly hit up here just to keep ourselves on the level. Like so. Oh, that was kind of close. There we go. All right. So yeah, this is monumental. I, I, I don't think this is the kind of game that is for everybody. Is it for me? Maybe. I, at first when I was playing it, I, you know, it's kind of shameful to admit, but I was like, what is going on here? I don't understand how this game works as, at all. I kind of thought at first it was one of those games that was just trying to be a little minimalistic or experimental just for the kind of the sake of being minimalistic and experimental but after spending some more time with it after really like giving it an honest chance I don't feel like that's the case I feel like this game actually does something uh, completely new and that's kind of awesome it's definitely not the kind of game that is is gonna be everyone's cup of tea as I've mentioned you know kind of exhaustively so far over the course of this video uh, but I don't necessarily think it's the kind of game that needs to be everybody's cup of tea I, I think if you know this just finds an audience for uh, of people that appreciate it for what it is which is kind of like a uh, a minimalist, abstract platformer that's just kind of like a, a, a good experience or a relaxing experience most of the time to be a part of. 
uh, then, then that's totally cool. I would be remiss if I didn't mention, by the way, that this has a totally awesome soundtrack. Uh, I, I, the name of the artist that has made it has completely slipped my mind at this point, but uh, the soundtrack is definitely, like, it's not one of those situations where I'm like, yeah, it's a good game, but the soundtrack's good as well. The soundtrack is actually an integral part of the experience, uh, and, and it does a really good job of kind of, you know, setting the stage for what you're playing. Come on, you can do it! You can do it just a little bit more! One more, and then, oh my god, I hate myself. So, so much for this actually being a, um, what was, what was I saying earlier? A relaxing, you know, meditative experience. Sometimes it can be frustrating in a, in a Meat Boy way. When the developers sent me the code for this, they're like, you know, we're, we're worried about the game because uh, it's hard. It's a lot harder than it looks. When I first saw this, admittedly, I thought it was like a, uh, you know, maybe like a fly-in. You know, remember like F-L-Y apostrophe N? It is not like that at all. This is very much more of a... A, a, a quote-unquote tough-as-nails platformer, but it's still, it's relaxing to be a part of. You know, it's got the same kind of Meat Boy element that I mentioned in every single one of these platformers, where death is not really a huge obstacle, because you don't have lives, and, um, you know, you, you almost never lose progress when you're, uh, when you die, which is important, I think, uh, if you want to create an experience that is actually, you know, fun to be a part of. So there we go, you know, as you get more advanced, you switch into, um, or you, you start using more and more techniques, like you might have seen right there. I don't wonder if we can actually get up there, or am I just gonna die down here? There's probably a way to get up there, and I imagine those are, um, the, the special lost soul shards that I have been basically completely unable of capturing so far. Um, yeah, we're gonna die here, and we kind of deserve to. I need to find a way to generate more momentum. You might, you know, understand that this is only the third level here. So, uh, you know, you can see how this game is actually pretty darn difficult, hopefully, uh, or maybe it's just me uh, that you're thinking is bad at this game. And that's not necessarily wrong, uh, but it's not necessarily right either. Can you make it? You can do it! One more and then, ah, uh, okay. Try it again. That's another kind of next level tactic, or basic level tactic, to be honest with you, uh, is, you know, just mashing the up button, because actually, you know, there is momentum, so if you use energy right off the bat, you're uh, likely to do or, like, if, let's put it this way, it's easier to demonstrate than it is to explain. If I just tap up as fast as possible, we can get a lot higher on that than if I was to, say, go down here. Uh, let's just wait for this bounce to stop. Uh, and if I was just to try to tap it rhythmically, I don't get nearly as high as you can see, so it's better to just tap it as fast as possible. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. What we want to do here, I believe, is, uh, get ourselves up as high as possible, then come down with the rock, like so. Then switch to air and try to get back up again, but it's not quite gonna work and we're gonna die there, okay. Uh, maybe we can get through this in a better way. Let me just try something here. So we're gonna speed ourselves up, get over this, switch back to the ice, get high as hell, come back down, uh, and then automatically fuck ourselves over there. Uh, let, let's try this again. I think switching to rock is important here. By the way, I think you do get more elements. I mean, if, if you saw when we loaded into uh, the second area there, oh. Oh, you're so close! Um, if you saw when we loaded into the second area there, there was like, it seemed like we had a snow element or something like that. There we go, we managed to get over it. Uh, so I don't know, I don't know if we'll see that over the course of this video. I kind of just want to stop this at the end of the, the first world. Uh, because otherwise, I, I'm getting in over my head, I think is a good way to put it. Let's, uh, slide backwards here, because it's actually important to get kind of caught on this, uh... It's not really a conveyor belt, but this pipe that is shooting out momentum, for lack of a better word. Functionally, is shooting out momentum anyway. Uh, which should allow us to get up here easily-ish. There we go, and then jump into that, and that'll be the end of the level. So let's play one more level. Uh, and in talking about my, uh, kind of meta impressions of Elemental so far, like whether I think this is worth purchasing or not, I totally think it is. I think this is the game uh, that you could spend a lot of time with, especially if you're the kind of person who can totally get in the zone with platformers like this that are all about reaching the end. You know, there's uh, several different kinds of platformers. Uh, this is my favorite. Platformers that are just about uh, reaching the... Uh, I really should have switched into ice there. Platformers that are just about kind of reaching the end and overcoming tough obstacles, my favorite, by far. Uh, much more than collectathons like uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, not to shit on Sonic or anything like that. Oh, we barely made it over the radioactive goo there, and we didn't make it over the radioactive goo that time. Um, so this game's totally on my alley. It is super, super not conventional. Uh, and, you know, for a lot of people, that is gonna sink it, I think, unfortunately. Uh, which is a damn shame, because it's a game that is definitely unique. I think, at the very least, this is the kind of game to have on your radar, even if you don't want to pick it up, uh, full price. Have it on your radar and consider, uh, picking this up in a Steam sale. Uh, if, if you're worried that maybe it's not going to be the kind of game for you. But, uh, you know, I, I've been overstating, I think, the niche appeal of this game. I think it's it's more universal... Uh, that was really stupid of me. 
Uh, it, it's easier to get into than perhaps I've uh, articulated so far. Uh, it, it, for how different it seems than something like Super Meat Boy, it's really not that much. Uh, it, I mean, there's some obvious areas where uh, it differs, like not being able to control your character, not having a traditional jump button and stuff like that is a little weird. Oh, we need to go all the way back here. Uh, which means I should probably actually restart. I hope I don't restart all the way at the top. I do, unfortunately. Draconian checkpoint system to a certain extent. I would prefer if it was maybe a little bit more lenient, but that's also partly just because I suck at the game. So if they made it a little bit easier, I would find it a little bit easier to progress, for better or for worse. But yes, um, for all the, the differences between this and your average, uh, you know, tough as nails platformer. Again, I'm using that genre moniker a little bit ironically. Uh, it, there's more similarities than differences, mostly in terms of the actual, like, feelings you get during your gameplay experience. Please be fast enough. You're not gonna be fast enough, you fool! How about this time? Yeah, I think we'll make it over there. And then you just kinda wanna keep going this way, cause we wanna turn into... The ice cream, good. And then we melt through this. So you see that, you know, there's elements, or puzzles with multiple elements. This is actually kind of a tough one right here. Uh, so we've got to kind of rise up through here, and we're going to do that by constantly switching back and forth between air and ice. And we're actually going to get through here totally A-OK. -okay. And then we're going to smash through this rock. That worked out way better than expected. By the way, these green uh, little particles here give us full energy again. Uh, so I should probably be, yeah, shifting into ice like crazy and then mashing up, but it's not gonna work. What we need to do, I think, is, is actually restart using the R key here and then go back. By the way, this control is fine on the 360 controller as well, uh, if that's the, the sort of thing that you're into. Uh, but I've been playing this with the PC. Just use the arrow keys, works totally fine. Absolutely no complaints whatsoever with respect to the controls, except for the fact, of course, uh, that it is uh, difficult to get into again, because it's kind of a unique experience. I'm not gonna have enough momentum to get over here, am I? Oh! Oh! Barely made it! The ice slowly trickles down. There we go. Get some of that and get some more momentum. Don't hit the... There we go. Oh, I'd actually, I have to go hit the fire. That was silly of me. Alright, we'll restart. Please don't restart me too far back. Ah, oh, that is so far back! Alright, let's try this again. So I, I've got this part on lock, I feel. Just keep coming up, and then over, and then up, and oh my god, am I going to be stuck at this for like the rest of the fucking video? I certainly hope not. There we go, we got way more momentum this time. Should be super easy to come up here. And then we'll do a gambit like that, which will give us a ton of speed. We'll do it again and again. Should be able to shoot the moon easily here, almost too easily. I had too much speed. I mean, you can really see, I think I called this a momentum-based platformer at the start of this. You're starting to see more elements of that, I think, than maybe we saw in the, the very, very early game. Uh, it, it's one of those games where I think, you know, the difference between someone who has played a lot and someone who's barely played it is super visible. I think, you know, if I had spent 10 hours with this game, what my, my play would be a lot more impressive than it is right now. Uh, which, you know, maybe is obvious, but... Oh, careful there. And this is perfect so far, and then we're gonna do a little switcheroo up here. Hopefully, generate a, at least a little bit of momentum, please. I'm so close to being over the edge here. There we go. Okay, this is a... Uh, that, that was really stupid of me. That's a really hard part uh, in the game, though. So we've got to switch to, like, the air bubble, uh, so that we can catch these uh, updrafts, basically. But at the same time, uh, the air bubble is also super vulnerable. So we have to be very cautious about that, but I think we're gonna get up here just fine. This is actually, this is the last level in the first world, so this is actually gonna make a fitting uh, ending point for this video, I feel. So you get pushed up here. Oh, I really should have switched, yes, I, I had to switch to the fire there, but I, I could have done that better, so let's try this again. Uh, if you miss that stream, you might as well just fucking kill yourself because uh, you don't have much of a chance moving forward. So let's try this again. Again, really loving the soundtrack here. Did I not? I must have actually accidentally switched into air there, in which case I apologize for wasting everybody's time. Let's try this again. Just want to do a quick up, up, and then there we go. That's something at least. I Oh, I ran out of energy because I was spamming the jump button. All right, I'm an idiot. Here we go. Last attempt. Probably not. We made it up just fine. Now let's let momentum carry me. Now the problem here is that if you totally fuck this part up, you have to go like all the way back to that original, like, previous checkpoint, but it's at the end anyway, so I guess joke's on me, because we should be able to get this easily. 
All right, that was, that was totally fine. Now, let's go back to the main menu here, and we'll do our kind of end-of-show wrap-up. So, there will be a link to pick up Elemental, either on the Steam page or direct on the developer's website. I just want to point out as a quick addendum, I'm trying to include more direct links to developer store pages, because if you didn't know, yes, it's convenient to purchase on Steam. I love Steam as a service. I have nothing negative to say about Valve, really. Uh, but they do take 30% off of each uh, Steam purchase. So, if you're really interested in picking up a game primarily to support developers and not just out of convenience, consider picking it up on the developer store page, because for the same price, more of the proceeds go to them. But in any case, if you want to pick it up on Steam, I'm sure the developers would not begrudge you either. This is Elemental. Should be available on Steam, I believe, this Friday. Maybe this Saturday? Maybe this Wednesday? I don't know. It depends when this video goes up. You can click the link in the store page, uh, or in the video description below to go to the store page and find out. Totally unique. That is the, the best thing I can say about it. It's not the most fun platformer I've ever played in my entire life, but at the same time, I had a really fun time kind of getting used to the uh, mechanics of the game, and it feels good once you get in the zone, and you kind of just intuitively know how to switch back and forth between the elements to accomplish goals that in platformers with more conventional mechanics would seem really easy, like normally you'd just be a double jump or something. Well, on this one, you have to, you know, 10 seconds earlier, you have to switch fire ice, fire ice to get a ton of momentum, then, you know, smash on the air key so you can get a little bit of upwards momentum, and then switch back to the ice so you don't die when you hit the ceiling or the, the floor. It's totally neat. Uh, I think this is definitely a game that is worth the asking price for a lot of people, and even if it doesn't look like it might be worth that for you right now. Uh, during a Steam sale, this is one to definitely keep your eye on because uh, you know I think if you pick this up for two fifty or five bucks, you absolutely would not be disappointed. But don't take that as a wait and see. If you like what you see right now, I would encourage you to pick it up. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Bitch and soundtrack as well. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video entertaining. And as always, I will see you next time.